mouse. Hello YouTube! Today I'm doing another one of my literary craft projects. And what I'm going to be showing you today is how to make Harry Potter style magic wands. I made these out of a pair of long chopsticks and some model magic and paint. And I'm really excited to share this with you, so let's get started. Now these are not the regular kind of chopsticks that you would eat with at a restaurant. These are more like, these are, I think they were described as long chopsticks for cooking. So I wanted something that was a little bit longer, you know, the, the shorter ones, they're like this. So they're a little bit short for a Harry Potter style wand, but these are just about the right length. So I'm going to cut these apart and I'm only going to be using one of them today. So I will set the other one aside. And the first thing that I'm going to do is take a pack of Model Magic. And I'm going to use this to kind of embellish the wand because this on its own, this could be a pretty decent Harry Potter style wand, but I'm going to dress it up a little bit with Model Magic and with these paints. So the first thing that I want to do is make kind of a handle for it. Now I've seen some people do something very similar with hot glue. And I think that's a brilliant idea too. I'm not super comfortable with hot glue. I don't really like it. So I'm doing it this way instead. I want it to look a little bit uneven, like it's uh, made out of wood, kind of like the ones in the movies do. And then I kind of like the ones that have something creeping down the side of them, like the vines on Hermione's wand. I'm not gonna try and do anything that intricate, but let's see if I can do maybe a swirly pattern. I'm gonna lay this down really gently. And this is air drying, so basically we're just gonna leave it here for a bit. I might come back when it's a little bit drier and maybe do some, uh, I have toothpicks here, and I might do some designs in the handle. But for now, we're just gonna let it sit. And what's left over of this, I'm gonna stick in a bag. All right, so I got impatient waiting for this one to dry, and this one was just looking at me saying, make me into a wand too. So I'm gonna do that. After all, I do have this leftover model magic, and I don't want that to dry out and become useless. So I'm gonna try something a little bit different with this one. I'm not trying to necessarily duplicate a specific character's wands with these. I'm just really going for something that's inspired by that, that looks like it would fit into the same world, basically. It's been a couple of hours and these are not completely dry, but they're dry enough that I think I can do a little bit of the detail work on them. So I'm going to take a toothpick and I'm going to, I'm going to try and do something on this with like a design. I wonder about doing another one going the opposite direction instead of like this, going like this, crossing over. All 
right, I like that, yes. All right, so now it's time to paint these. So starting with this wand, on the site that used to be Pottermore, I took the wand quiz and I got Larch and Unicorn Hair. And obviously the unicorn hair, unicorns aren't a real thing and I'm not putting something inside of a chopstick. But I wanna try and make the wand itself look like it's made out of Larch, which is kind of a light golden brown color. And then this one, I haven't really decided what I'm gonna do with it yet. I kind of just got the idea for the handle being like this on the spur of the moment, so I guess we'll just see what feels right. For kind of a light golden brown color, I think I'm going to start with this. It's not exactly how I imagined it, but I think it should be fine. And I can do more with like the, the metallic gold to give it a little bit more of a golden color as well. But to start off with, I'm going to leave the handle and do that separately. So I'll start painting the rest of the wand. All right, I think that that should do it. And then I'm just gonna go back through again and make sure I didn't, oh yeah, like see, I missed a spot there. We can cover that though. This seems to be drying kind of quickly actually. This part around here is pretty much dry, the part that I painted first but this out here is obviously still wet. So we're gonna give it a little bit. Oh, I see another spot that I missed. For now, I'm just going to lay this really carefully here on the paper plate. Okay, that works. Um, a little bit of it will come off on the paper plate, I think, but I'll be able to touch it up when it's done. And in the meantime, this is gonna go in here and I'm gonna wash it off. So for this one, I think I'm gonna go with the Burnt Umber as the base color. set it right here with the handle no longer over the plate and we're going to let that dry. All right the paint is dry and now I'm going to switch back to this one. This one is a little bit darker and not quite as brightly colored as what I was looking for to make it look like large. So what I want to do is take some of this sort of bright peach color on its own and I'm just going to paint very lightly over parts of it. use black in little crevices in between the paint and the uh, wand and I'm going to use a really small brush for that to get it really precise. See just a tiny bit So going back to this one, I really like the look of this lighter color. I think that that works better than the dark brown, so I think I'm actually going to do it all in the lighter color. Just a, a thin coat over the rest of it. Here is a close-up look of the wands right now. did the shadows and the crevices of this one I want to do something similar on this one and I'm going to use this darker brown and again I'm going to use the really fine point brush And then 
here on the handle too, even though there's not a place where the model magic meets the wood, I'm still going to do some dark paint around the crevices and the, the sides of the little raised swirly thing. that will do for now and we're going to let that dry. I'm saying that a lot, <laughs> yes, but it's important to let the paint dry. In the meantime on this one I've got my dark shadows along the crevices but I think I need something like highlights so a little bit more of this color. Let's see how that looks. I don't want it to be just a solid color. It needs to be to where there's texture because wood isn't just the same color throughout. One thing that I wanna do here, because I painted solidly over the handle but not over the, uh, the rest of the wand. You see how there's a bit of a difference. This is more of a solid color. This is more a mixture of colors. So I wanna try and replicate that on the handle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of water and put it in the dried paint from that darker color I was using earlier and try and just get it a little bit working again. I'm not 100% sure if this is going to work, but I figure it probably can't hurt. I'm going to take what I got on my brush and I'm going to just kind of gently go over parts of the handle with it. So the last step as far as paint goes is going to be to use the metallic gold and silver. And I'm going to start with this one. The first thing that I want to do here is this, this little piece that's wrapping around the wand. The next thing that I'm going to do is one of these, and I'm not going to paint it solid gold, but I'm just going to do gold sort of pink. I kind of want to do something with silver. I think that the dark brown and silver will go well together. But it's not going to be like this one, it's going to be little patterns up the side. flowers. Let's, let's see if I can do flowers. Oh, I like this. That must have been, I had some on my finger, I think. Just a few gold flecks. I wonder if I can do that intentionally. Because some of this got uh, painted over during all those other coats of paint. I think this one's done. We're almost done. The last thing that I'm going to do, I've got the wands all painted. sure that that paint doesn't chip away and that the model magic stays put. So I'm going to use some of this. 
And I'm going to put it on pretty thin. I don't want it goopy. And it'll dry clear, but it'll just form kind of a protective seal around it. I'm using the glossy kind because I want it to look kind of polished, like, like polished wood. You can kind of see what it's going to look like right now. There's still, you know, it's not quite dry and so there's still a little bit of discoloration, but it, it'll dry clear. So here is how the finished product came out.